Today I'm ranking the new watch releases of 2023. Basically, Johnny, we spent some time watching them on. There's had a bit of fun, saw some incredible stuff, saw some horrible stuff. My overall thoughts of all the releases is actually quite positive. I had more fun during this show than I had the previous year. Before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel now. And of course, if you want to buy or sell your watch, go to prideandpinion.com. I'm very proud that this video is again sponsored by Shopify, but more about that later. Now let's get stuck in. So Johnny has moved me more to the right because I need to make space for this yeah. What do you call this thing? Oh yeah, the, 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 the list. Right, let's rank some watches. First to start off with, the new Aquanaut, the 5261R. This is the first time we've ever seen an annual calendar on an Aquanaut. This watch is a bit of a weird one because if you look at the stats of the watch, it is potentially an incredible piece. It's rose gold, it's a sports watch, it's on a rubber strap, it has an annual calendar. You think, wow, this must be the best watch ever. If you then see it on a photo, you think, what is this weird watch? But then when you see it, in actual real life you think wow this actually works this watch is like a mixture of emotions but of course Patek knocked it out of the park with this watch in real life which is the most important thing and I therefore think that the new Patek Aquanaut 5261R I find it a really difficult one I put it in the Merc category it's a nice looking watch but if I had 50,000 sterling today and I would pick a watch I wouldn't buy this watch instantly if you know what I mean I would therefore put it in the Merc category but I understand why people would buy it the Platona Rolex Daytona Reference number, this is the first time this reference number ever features on this channel. Reference number 126506. Ten years after the Platinum Daytona made its debut, it has been discontinued and released with a new caliber, a new bezel, and a, a transparent case back. I genuinely think this is a really, really good watch and a great decision by Rolex. And it shows that Rolex is starting to listen more to their clients. My only point is that I think that Rolex should have done that with the other Daytonas as well, because basically Basically what they're saying here is you can have an open case back, you can see this beautiful caliber 4131, but only when you spend 50 or 60 thousand pounds on this watch retail. And I do find that quite sad to be honest. I think the overall customers of Rolex deserve that in the other Daytona as well. I do understand why they've done this. This is pure commercial decision. For me this watch goes in the class category. Sorry. It's aesthetically beautiful. And same for the reference number, by the way, that we see here, 126500. A lot of people didn't like this, the new Panda. I do, I do like it. Again, the same with the ring and the bezel. I think it's aesthetically a very beautiful watch. It's more flat. Aesthetically, it looks very, very good. So for that, unbelievable, well done. I do think it's very, very sad that it didn't put an open case back on, like I discussed earlier. I do put this watch in a class category because it's a class watch, period, done. What is this piece of shit? What are you showing me here? Oh, is this, oh, sorry, it's the IWC engineer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Did I say that out loud? Personally, as an IWC fan, has been really, really looking forward to IWC bringing out the new engineer. They've done an incredible job this time. Okay, they were two years late, but they've done an incredible job in the first place. The execution of this watch is done in perfection, may I add. It's a beautiful watch. And the version in titanium, it's absolutely insane. I absolutely love it. And I would buy one tomorrow. However, there's also always something, right, isn't there? What's going on with that price? I believe that the IWC Engineer in steel is priced at $13,000 and the titanium version is priced at $15,000. That honestly blew my mind. This was a unique opportunity for IWC to reward their loyal customers, their loyal fans with a watch that they've been waiting for for so long in a perfect price record between seven and $9,000. I think that was a missed opportunity. I think the price point is very far off, but I think it is a very, very good platform for IWC. IWC to work on further. If the watch was priced perfectly, I would put the watch in the would buy category for sure. But for that, I'm actually going to put it in the Merc category. Because of that price, I'm actually a bit disappointed with IWC. IWC next time, reward your fans, reward your customers. IWC Titanium, I would also put in the Merc category because of that exact reason. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Attack Hoyer Carrera 60th anniversary. The Carrera was first introduced in 1963 by Jack Hoyer. A really, really important watch. Watch. And for me as well, my favorite. We all know that I absolutely love chronographs and this one is not going to be any exception. I must say that I've been very critical with Tech Hoyer, that if Tech Hoyer has done absolutely bollocks in the last couple of years, but bringing out this watch, incredible. What an incredible, beautiful looking watch. I am stunned. Because of this watch, I forgive them that they actually have done this collaboration with Mario 
card. And this is the first time in many, many years that I would actually go out to buy a Tech Heuer Carrera. For me, this is one of the best releases of the whole show altogether. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the billionaire's watch. The Jacob & Co. billionaire's watch. I actually had the pleasure to handle this watch. I think it's the most horrible, insane thing, but also really attractive, but extremely horrendous at the same time type of watch. I love it and I hate it at the same time equally as bad. It's like everything I hate about a watch, but everything I love about craftsmanship and the search for these diamonds, because there shouldn't be in a tier list about watches anyway. This is more a bracelet, piece of jewelry, maybe even considered a piece of art, because it took Jacob & Co. about four years to actually find all these stones all together. So it's a project of four years. Keep in mind, right? These diamonds are produced by the mother of earth, the thing that we walk on all day. Not in a lab. This is insane to find so many stones in exactly the same clarity, exactly the same color, and of course, in the same size. I mean, that on its own is a task that is nearly impossible. And for that, Jacob & Co., you've done an incredible job. I actually really like where Jacob is heading towards. I know the ostentatious, horrible fishbowl f watches. We all know them, right? I still hate them. But then they bring out something really cool, like the casino watch. I don't know where to put this on. It's so difficult. Would you buy it? For 20 million? Yeah. No chance. There you go, man. Okay. Now it's time to talk about something that's actually good. Shopify has helped me build my business to where it is right now. From 2017 of me selling watches on the boot of my car and opening my first website to a full retail operation and an e-commerce business selling the most expensive watches in the world. Shopify is the best all-in-one commerce platform. It's the easiest platform to use. As you can see, all sorts of sales going through my business. Pride and being an online order for 102 points, an online order of 25 points, but also a draft order from our office for 88,000 points. And that's all in one day. I can see everything just by the glance of my phone. I go in, see the stats, who bought it, where they're from. Also, if they pay, for example, with credit cards and there's a lot of credit card fraud going on, I get a report. They actually vet, they check if an order is fraudulent, yes or no. It allows me to control my business and therefore bring the business to the next level. The analytics are absolutely incredible. And it actually gives me a breakdown of what I've done that week or month to date. It also shows me how good I'm performing in comparison to the same period last year or the same period last month. And this shows me that I'm actually 39% up in comparison to last month. Shopify can be an incredibly advanced tool, but also an incredibly easy startup platform for you to start your own business. If you want to start your business, go to the first link in the description now. Shopify is unbelievable and I'm going to put it in the God tier category. The Tudor GMT, white dial, can't go wrong. Most affordable, best value for money GMT out there. Cannot go wrong buying that and I'm really, really really like in the hint back to a bit of history, right? The Albino, we all know it. If we don't, now you do. It's just a really good watch. Belongs in the class category. The Cartier Tank Normal. Everyone says that this is one of the best releases on the show. I may say I absolutely love this watch in any way, shape or form. And this is potentially the only Cartier Tank I could wear with this brick bracelet. It looks incredible. I've seen it in the flash and it is an absolutely stunning watch. The only thing I'm worried about, the only thing I'm annoyed about is they bring this out limited 100 in gold and 100 in platinum so again it's not going to be accessible to anyone so 100 of these 100 of these yes that would make the united states no the, the whole world the whole world the whole world that's it yeah but this is a Cartier tank I would actually buy. I would put it in the would buy category, but if it was actually accessible to the public, instead of only limited to 100 pieces, I would put it in the class category. That's my point. And the platinum one is somewhere else in this list, and I put that in the would buy category as well. The new Rolex Skydweller in rose gold with a blue dial. What a beautiful watch that is in person, but yeah, it's not very creative. But I would buy that watch because it's just a beautiful looking watch. Do you know when you go to a birthday and you're sitting there in a circle and and there's some guy that tries to be funny but isn't funny. That's the feeling I have with this Oris Kermit. I don't find it funny in any way, shape or form. I think it's a cool watch. I think the color is all right, but the bullshit backstory behind this watch is a bit of a bollocks. Ah, frog day or Kermit day or first day or whatever. Whatever day you mean. Creative, well done, fantastic. Hey there. Oh my God, it's co Oh my How God. How you doing? Got something for you. No. Yeah. I really rate Oris, however, right? Oris has done some incredible things in the past, but I'm just feeling I'm getting more distance from Oris rather than I'm being more attracted to Oris. No, I'm going to put that in the shite category, unfortunately. Ah, look! The Piaget Aquanaut. Oh, sorry. Uh, Polo. I don't want to talk about this. This goes straight in the bin. This is like Piaget is making a homage to the Aquanaut. What the f***? No, you know what? F*** 
Tano put in a Hublot category. That's horrendous. Whenever Rolex introduced this for the first time, I thought, what the f***? But then I started to understand it. Watches our emotions. Rolex is just trying to be fun. It's just a bit weird that it comes from Rolex because we're not used to Rolex having fun. If another brand brought this out, if H. Moser brought this out, it would have been completely normal. It just got a bit of a shock effect because Rolex brought it out. But I actually really respect that and I really like that. I'm excited about the direction that Rolex is going, finally, again. It's just cool stuff. For that, I'm actually putting this in the class category. Who would have thought that? Well done, Rolex. No, I would put it in the, sorry, goodbye category. 5531. The 5531 was the first ever reference that featured a world timer and a minute repeater, but the minute repeater would not only chime the home time, but if you set the time on a different time, it would also chime that time. And that was the world's first. Now they finally brought this out in white gold as well, and it's just an addition to the 5531 reference. Just a really, really good watch. I can't afford it, so I would put it in the would buy category if I had the money, but unfortunately I don't, so I put it in the Meur category. But it's not Meur because it's a Meur watch, because it's actually a class watch, so that's why I put it in the class category. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fact! We got there in the end. We got there in the end. This is, I think, Rolex's biggest release, the Yachtmaster 42 in titanium. I think it's an incredibly beautiful looking watch and they use titanium and everyone is raving about it. I think it's one of the best releases, to be fair. And I understand the functionality of it. It's a bit of the posh man submariner, to be honest. But yes, I would buy this because I would love to own one. Rolex 1908. Rolex was founded in 1905 called uh, Wilsdorf and Davis. And the Rolex name was adapted in 19. 1908. An incredibly beautiful watch. Don't want to tell too much about it. It's a beautiful looking watch. Would I buy it? Yes. The Explorer 40. I think they could have done way more with the Explorer than they actually done. Last year they discontinued the Explorer 39 and introduced it in 36 or reintroduced it in 36. Now they reintroduced the 39 into a 40, which is a nice looking basic watch, but listen, it's not doing anything for me. So I'll put that in the Mer category. This Hublot piece of shit can go straight where it belongs. I've seen that watch. It looks even worse in real life. What the f is this piece of sh that's horrendous. I think that GMT is absolutely insane. I think this is one of the most beautiful watches I have ever seen in my life, in real life. Love this with a massive passion for several reasons. One of which, finally bringing back the Jubilee bracelet in precious metal, ladies and gentlemen. I love everything of this. It is just so easy to do, but I've finally done it after so many years. And for that, I say that this watch belongs in a class category. What an incredible f beautiful watch that is. White gold sky dweller, all good, lovely watch, uninspiring, but it's all right. The execution is perfect, but it's like a bit of a meh, and I love sky dweller, it's just like meh. Black Bay 54 on the kind of Oyster Flex inspired bracelet. This is Tudor being inspired by Rolex. It's the same company basically, but it's really, really cool to see this. 37 is significantly too small for me, unfortunately, but I really, really like that Tudor is heading towards a more vintage direction again with that size. And a lot of people will love that. This will do the brand tutor very, very well. And I would put this in the class category because I wouldn't buy it because it's too small for me. And it's not a meh because it's actually quite good. It's not shite, it's certainly not a hublot, but it's not god tier. It would have been god tier if I would be able to wear it. The Rolex GMT Master 2 with a two-tone Jubilee bracelet. As much as I love the gold one, it's not really nice looking. I understand why Rolex has done this, but for me, it's not really a good looking watch, to be honest. So that belongs in the meh category. Vacheron Constantine overseas. Absolutely love the overseas in any way, shape or form. I'm not really really a big fan of this layout. That's my problem. So that's why I'm putting it in the Mer category. Layout of the dial, they couldn't have done this any different to be honest, but honestly, <laughs> The overseas are really good. You don't have to make it better with different complications. You have a perpetual calendar in the overseas, mate. Why the f do I need this? The Cartier Santos in green. I like it. I really, really like it. And I would buy it. What you see here is basically a reimagined version of the Tudor Black Bay that was first introduced in 2012. The watch that, by the way, saved Tudor from absolute disaster because Tudor was making some dog sh before that, but whatever. Unbelievable. They've done incredible and I love Tudor. Tudor is one of my favorite brands in the whole world. And like I've said in many, many videos, Tudor will surpass Omega at a certain point. Reintroducing that, something so simple, small tweaks, but doing it in this way, executing it just perfect, exactly what their customers want, that is insanely exciting. I respect Tudor a lot. I absolutely love every bit of it. And this is, I think, my favorite release of the entire show. Tudor, incredible job this year. And for that, I'm putting it in the God Tier category. There we go, at 
last. Now people are gonna declare me crazy, but I just wanna say one thing. Watches are emotions. We want to wear a watch that makes us feel better that day. If I wake up in the morning, I wanna put on a watch that gives me a better feeling, a watch that gives me confidence, a watch that makes me smile. And damn right, we take this industry way too serious. And then Rolex, probably the most serious watch brands of everyone. The watch brand that doesn't take any risks. All of a sudden comes out with a watch that looks like a puzzle on the dial with love, with emoticons or emoji, whatever, what, em emojis, things, whatever the f you call them. I think it's so far beyond anything I've seen Rolex doing. And I absolutely love it. They're starting to understand their customers finally again. They're starting to be fun. They're starting to be playful. This is a genius marketing move because everyone is talking about this particular watch. Rolex, you've done a great job this show. For that, I'm going to put the puzzle day date in a god tier category. You're crazy. Where would you put it? Hublo category? It's emotion, bro. It's ridiculous. It's emotion. And it is ridiculous, but that's why I love it. Ridiculously ugly. It's stupid they've got emojis for the days love it you don't expect it from a brand like rolex because it shouldn't be done it should who's the watch expert now i think you've just lost your status with that guys what do you think do you love it do you hate it do you agree do you disagree i would love to hear your opinion and remember guys if you want to start your business with shopify today make sure you click on the first link in the description